is everyone today? Rurok. So, Rurok helmets. A lot of you may have seen Rurok helmets taking uh, social media by storm, pretty much. And good reason to it as well. They are good helmets. I've heard good reviews about them, I've heard good testing results from them, and I finally. Ah! <laughs> oh god, it's my fault for putting that up there. Look at that. This off topic now, but this here is a tank for a new project that's way away in the pipeline. It's nowhere near being started. But I keep on hitting my head on it. Why did I put it there? I have no idea. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. I have a brand new Rurok helmet here, the Atlas, the Gatekeeper, which pretty cool. I really love their names. But what drew me to their helmets is the design of them. Let me show you. In fact, let me open it up. I have actually opened it up already because I'm impatient like that. If I get something, I have to open it. So this isn't a true unboxing, not for the first time at least, but I will be unboxing it so you can actually see what's inside. So let's get it. I have my motorcycle ramp. Motorcycle's off it now so I can at least do it on here now. So we've got the camera set up there and the GoPro. So the GoPro is gonna be a little bit handier when it comes to this, if I'm not in the way of these lights. So as I said, they've been really kind enough to send me this and I have opened everything. So let's see what is in the box that I got from Rurok. First of all, helmet bag, amazing. Let's put that to one side at the moment. Then, oh, wow. I didn't actually think they were going to be sending me this. I was going to get this separately afterwards. Fantastic. Shockwave. So the shockwave system is the Bluetooth kit that goes inside the helmet. Let's put this to one side at the moment. In fact, let's have a quick sneak peek into it. So the, this, from what I've seen, is the actual kit that goes into the back of the helmet. And then you've got your speakers and your microphone there. Charging cable, I'm guessing, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this screwdriver is to do all the little jobs that you need to do to actually fit it into place. Fantastic. Now, nothing else in there. Now for the helmet. In fact, let's get rid of this box here. It is a true past the parcel. I mean, look at that. Let's get this out. Yes. Put this box inside. And here we are. The Atlas. Again, as I mentioned, comes in a really nice sleek box. Let's open it up. I'm trying to do this with one hand now. I know I've got the camera up there, but I'm trying to do this with one hand. Da -da -da. Da -da. Okay, it's in its own little pouch. Great, I mean, even better. We've got a carry case here. In fact, Oh, I'm going to tease you a bit more. I am going to tease you a bit more. Let's put this to one side for a moment. Let's have a look at the case. Try this with my one hand. That can go to the bin. I mean, that is pretty neat. So this is a pretty neat helmet bag. Padded on the inside. Protects your, protects your helmet. Nice velvety touch. Carry strap, carry handles, perfect. I mean, that is well worth it in itself. But the Atlas. So in this box, ah, oh, huh. there's a visor already on that. There's another visor here. Okay. So this appears to be a spare visor. Oh, it's a tinted visor. Perfect. I mean. Obviously not in our current climate, no. But summertime riding, that's gonna be perfect. And I think it actually completes the look as well. The Atlas helmets do look fantastic when you've got different colored visors and things. Obviously, you know, just kind of jazz it up a little bit. Here is the helmet. Oh, <laughs> you can just see it here. Oh, 
I'll check that out. That is super. I've got my greasy hands on it already. <laughs> oh wow. Look at that. Graphics on that is superb. Really nice as well. It's I mean they are printed graphics. It's not like individual stickers, it is one complete graphic over all of it by the looks of it. But this is a beautiful helmet. Let me close the box so I can at least have in fact no. Let me put the box to one side. I'm gonna keep this box. I'm not gonna throw it. I'm gonna keep the box. So let's put that on one side. In fact, let's use the box as a place. So the Atlas, first thing you want to do is get rid of the stick here. Obviously it protects it, but look at that. It does come with this replacement visor as well, which I actually prefer. Obviously it's not suitable for you know, nighttime riding, but just as a style kind of viewpoint, the dark visor definitely does look a heck of a lot cooler. I don't know, you can get gold and everything like that as well with it. One of the things I will try and do today is figure out how easy it is to change that, but as far as I can see, it's an Allen key in there, unscrew it. If it's anything like the other helmets that I've used, such as Biltwell, it is a matter of just unscrewing that, replacing these two, and putting it in there. Now one of the things drawing me to actually getting the Gatekeeper, there's a lot of different styles you can get with the Rock. You've got a skull shape here, especially with these nostril vents here, I call them. The way that the chin sticks out at the bottom, then you've got the nose up here as well. So that nose shape does actually go around your nose and everything. You've got enough padding inside here as well to obviously feel safe. There is an interchangeable chin windbreaker at the bottom here which you can pull in and out. So that just slots in and out as you want it. Slot it back in. Inside the helmet you have got an open and close function here. Let's get the GoPro in there. Inside the helmet you have got a little open and close vent system here. This rock strap here is a lot easier to use than most other helmets. Obviously you've got different kinds of straps for helmets. You've got the old fashioned put between two clips, tighten it up, you've got the seat belt kind of clip on, and there's this one. It's purely a magnetic system. Pretty much put two ends next to each other, this end and that end, and it will clip together. That is it, safe. It's safe because you've got a ridge on the other side which stops it from coming out. It doesn't pull out until you pull this little red thing there and it comes off straight away. Obviously you need to adjust it to suit your head size. You've got all these individual vents at the side. You've got a vent coming in through here. As I mentioned before, the vent at the front. You have a vent at the top here, an exit vent, and another one there. And this whole aerodynamic system, there's another exit vent out at the bottom here. And it's just the shape of it, I think it's pretty cool. Especially this little swoop off the back here. But as I said before, one of the main things that's drawn me to Rural Helmets is the design. The designs are beautiful in this. Now I was drawn especially to the Gatekeeper. Rook have got these different emblems where they've got mouths, teeth and things like that. For me, I like the subtle look and that's where the Gatekeeper works. Perfectly. Weight wise for this helmet, it is light. It is light. It's a carbon fibre shell, so obviously it will be light. There's a lot of padding inside here as well, all interchangeable. You can pull out all these paddings here, so everything is velcroed in. You can take all the padding outside of that if you want to. I'm, I'm not going to do so at the moment because I've got no need to, but if you want to wash it or anything like that, that is where that comes in handy. It does come out very easily. Now for the shockwave system, if you do want to install a Bluetooth device and Atlas is compatible with the shockwave system, Pretty much take those two screws out, insert your new shockwave system, just see inside there, but you have got indents for the headphones and the mic then follows through to the front and in the front of the helmet, which is where you want the mic too. The mechanism for closing, simple, up and down, but it does have that precise closing here. It's not magnetic or anything like that, it's just a definitive close. Lift it up again simply just by flicking that up. And all in all, it is a beautiful helmet. So let's try it on. It is freezing in here today, which is why I'm wearing a cardigan again. But let's try on the helmet anyway. See what it feels like. Excuse my cap hair. Now I'm putting it on for the first time, and it will be a little bit tight, especially on a fresh helmet. Now it's a little bit tight going over the top of my head, but again, that's because it is a new helmet. How it feels though, is really snug. Top of your dome, it sits on top of your dome, it is really snug on there as well, not over tight, it doesn't squeeze your brains or anything like that. 
but you can feel the padding all around. There's not any empty spaces or any voids or anything like that. It feels really nice. The chin padding at the side, again, hugs really nicely on that. There's no movement. This is a large helmet. I'm a 71 centimeter circumference head, and there's no movement in that at all. And it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It doesn't push in to the point where you're actually chewing your own cheeks, which is what I find with a lot of helmets. But again, it is snug enough that it feels comfortable and safe as well. The chin strap itself has got this extra padding here, so that goes underneath your chin first. Let's see if I can actually do this. I have never used one of these before, so this is completely alien to me. And without actually looking at what I'm doing, I don't know if I can do this. It comes with practice. Oh, there we go. Simple as that. It's loose at the moment because I haven't adjusted it to myself, but in terms of putting it on, it was a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. Taking it off again, you've got that red pull cord here. There you go. Now, I'm really impressed with this helmet. Let's put the visor down. It feels good. It does feel good and it feels comfortable. I'm sure after a while, you're not even going to notice that it's on your head. So it's passed the field test anyway. Next thing we need to do is take it out on the bike. Before the evening comes, before that comes in, let's take it out on the bike and see what I think of it. Now, I'm not gonna stick a GoPro on the side of it, so what I will do is, if I can, I've got a little GoPro case here and I've got my bow on somewhere so I can mount it onto the front of the bike so you can actually see my helmet. That is one of the things that we need to do. So let's see how easy it is to change the visor on this thing. that side, tighten this side, sorted. And that does look mean like that, really mean. Perfect. That's the first time around. Everyone says that the cat is I run reliable at winter. Let's give it a go. Bit of choke. So recording the audio after the ride, only because I didn't have my microphone to hand to put inside the helmet. One thing I can certainly say for sure about this helmet is that it is super comfortable. Even when riding, you completely forget that it's on your head. Now the first unique thing that struck me about this helmet is the space that you have around your ears. A lot of helmets that I usually wear tend to squeeze your earlobes. They're not uncomfortable, but you can tell that you've got something pressing up against your earlobes. With this helmet, it's completely different. You've got so much room around your ears, and I know it's such a strange thing to say, but it's the one thing I picked up on this. Wind noise in this helmet, first of all, wasn't actually bad at all. On this ride here, I tried it without a little chin windbreaker. Second ride after that, I tried it with, and wind noise was reduced a heck of a lot. What you find is that there's a lot of wind that actually seeps under the chin without that guard there. But with it there, it eliminates all that wind and all that breeze and the noise and everything that comes with it. Obviously, with this being a light helmet and a carbon fibre helmet, you are going to get a little bit of wind noise, but nothing to worry about. Now, bearing in mind that we have a shockwave system to plug it into this helmet, wind noise isn't going to be an issue at all to use that or to even ride without that. So as you can see, using the smoked visor on this helmet, especially with all this sun, it's got a low sun. We're in winter time now. It's a really low sun setting at all time today here. Usually that 
that would blind me. And even with different visors I've used in the past, this visor actually proves to be one of the better ones that I've used. It completely eliminates glare, I can see straight through everything, I've got no issues seeing where I'm going. Even if I'm riding towards direct sunlight, I've got no issues at all. So this smoked visor is highly recommended, especially if you're going to be using it on sunny days. The chin strap of this helmet is really comfortable. The extra padding, those two layers, you don't even feel the chin strap at all. I would say with everything else in this helmet, as I've said before, you hardly realise that the helmet is on you, which is one of the best features about this helmet. I can't really fault this helmet yet. I have worn it for a short while on longer durations. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it lasts with wear and tear as well. I will be using this a lot more, so we'll see how it goes with perishing and decay and see how the padding stays up. But to everyone out there, I'd highly recommend a Rurok helmet. So that is all from me. If you like what you see, subscribe and follow me next week. Next week's video will definitely be the Ducati Monster video, so tune in for that. So until next week, ride safe, stay safe, and I'll see you next week.